Why not a vault? Well, <coughs> if you got an RPZ, you're dead already, right? You can't put it in a vault. Now, uh, number two, vaults are dangerous and expensive to maintain and repair. Man, have we heard stories about, about uh, being caught in confined space emergencies. And the longer you're around this, the more stories you probably had. Anybody had a rattler in their vault in their lifetime? Yeah, it's just one. Well, not only that, every now, as of May the 6th of 2015, there's a new confined space rule that says that if you're in a, in a confined space that requires, that has the possibility of engulfment, and obviously a water vault with six or seven valves in it, it has the possibility of engulfment, you're now required, and it started in August, to file an, an a permit. And um, the per permit has to be pulled by the contractor, it has to be signed off on by the property owner, and it has to be marked, time marked when it's opened and closed. And it costs money. <coughs> OSHA is just now starting to get their arms around. This guy, Tony Santoro up in Dallas, is now starting to actually start talking about it. And it's been in place for over a year. But this is yet to roll out. Whether or not your, your uh, city gets on board with it very soon is just a question of how active your, you know, your OSHA is, people are down here, I guess. But it's all, every single vault is supposed to be marked, permit, open with permit only. It's unbelievable. So my point is, it's expensive to open vaults. It's stupidly expensive. It's a pain in the butt. And pe but people get hurt. And so that's the other reason it's there, because people get hurt. All right. <coughs> Number three, th flooded vaults violate the International Plumbing Code. They also violate the, the UPC, but here's why. In 601, 608-1, it says, man, you can't put these things in a place prone to flood. Well, how many of your vaults, when you open them up, are flooded? If it's more than 10%, you kind of have to say it's kind of prone to flooding. It's more like 50%. So we've already violated IPC in, in the way I look at it. But here's what U USC says, and I know there's mixed 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 uh, feelings about USC, and I get that. But back in 2005, they were the first ones to say the foundation's recommendation would be to install the double check valve above grade. Well, being sort of unsatisfied with the degree to which they all picked up on this advice, they published a little stronger language just two summers ago, or springs ago, and said, when a backflow preventer is installed below grade, the vault in the pit or, which the assembly is installed may fill up with water. The water in the pit could create a cross connection between the water in the pit and the backflow preventer through the test cocks. Now here's the, here's the money line. This may occur whether the test cocks are opened or closed. How is that possible? <coughs> Aspiration. You get a, a test cock on number one that's got, that's leaky even when it's closed because it's just ferreted out. You're, you're put, every time you have a backflow, you're pushing contaminated water from that vault into the city water main. Every time you have the same val kind of a valve on number four, you're pushing water into the, into the, the, the customer's water continually from the vault if you're aspirating. Does that make sense? There's no protection on number one or number four. So all that great expensive backflow assembly Science, and yet at the test cock number one and the test cock number four, there's no protection to the outer ends of the earth, right? Then there's this issue of retrofit costs. When we talked about how, how you're disqualified for, from putting a, a <coughs> vault in when you've got a double check, right? Well, what about when you start with a double check, but the building lives long enough to find a new tenant that is a high hazard user? Well, I've got this vault out here. You want this property? Sure, I'll move in. So I drove by, this happens to be in front of the Beeman car dealership, uh, and it's not where they do their retail, it's a warehousing facility there in Nashville. And I drove by and I saw this, and I had to find out what the story was behind it. So when it took me a couple of weeks, but basically, when they bought the property and erected the building, they put a double check down there in the vault with the meter. Two years later, they say, the city changed an ordinance that redefined their particular use that they were using from low hazard to high hazard. They didn't change what they were doing, but the city kind of moved the bar on them, right? Well, they were okay until they pulled a permit or tried to pull a permit to upgrade their HVAC system. When they did, they said, well, we'll give you that permit as soon as you get that RPZ out, or uh, uh, that double check out of there and put an RPZ in. So now, a vault that virtually sits uh, useless 
with the exception of the meter, and it only takes up about a third of that space. Now, they, they easily paid three or four times for a single solution because they began with a double check only solution. You see what I'm saying? And we're seeing so much more of this, these retrofits. We just replaced 55 uh, 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 backflow preventers in the state of North Carolina from double check because they decided they needed to move above grade. So we sold 55 assemblies, uh, enclosures to the state of North Carolina just recently. So this happens all the time. Finally, I want to just mention this. This guy's name is Doug Krieger. He's probably the leading advocate and litigator. So don't, you don't want to know him, I guess, <coughs> for cross-connection control issues. He lives in Indianapolis. And he's written a bunch. He's quoted all over. Well, this is, this is a quote he had in Plumbing Standards Magazine. And when the David DeBoard article that I was telling you about earlier from Chicago, that guy, when they published that, they re-ran Doug's, Doug's quote uh, right after that came out, and it says, an outdoor above-ground backflow preventer installation may be the best way to, one, reduce the owner's exposure, the damage caused by the flooding, and the corresponding co water con contamination caused by a cross-connection, and two, reduce the legal liability of the design engineers, the installers, and the certified testers whose professional actions in part may have otherwise caused the flooding harm. The water industry has a nationally accepted design criteria in ASSE's 1060. You guys heard of ASSE 1060? It's just basically the standard that all these enclosures are kind of built around with respect to quality and safety. Uh, it's a win-win-win insurance policy. So, why not a vault? Well, no RPZs is below grade, of course. Confined space hazards. Uh, submerged valves and test cocks violate the IPC and the UPC. Changing hazards and changing hazard thresholds mean retrofits, and they're always expensive. And then legal interest recommend enclosures. <laughs>